the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt and they were going there challenges they needed water for them that was a challenge to give water to three million people but God had solution so he always went back to God uh, they needed food what are we going to eat and they behave like the mixed multitude but again he went back to God what we learn from there is in ministry there are the challenges it's like he all want to tell me his own challenges. It's not no use to me because I want to go to a Roman prison. I want to go to any I want to go to any of the challenges, uh, you know, the Philippines or uh, the Corinthians. Mm-hmm. So telling me his, uh, you know, challenges and how to solve that problem. It's like when we were, uh, you know, at school, I was teaching, uh, you know, uh, simultaneous uh, questions and all that, and then I bring a solution. And I tell somebody, then if you have some materials, uh, questions, this is how to solve it. And then he goes into life, he doesn't have some materials, uh, question to solve, he has a uh, <laughs> question to solve, and he cannot do that because he's focusing on how I solve my own peculiar problem. The point is, whatever problem we have, we're going to have different problems. If people know what problems I've gone through and what solution I provide, they won't have to depend on the Holy Spirit. They won't have to depend on a fresh insight into solving problem. They will say, this is our pastor, so and so solve this problem. And they're looking for that problem, and Satan is too clever for that. He doesn't come from this angle, he comes from the other angle, and brings another kind of problem. You never have from as the so and so. What are you going to do? Confusion. That's why it says, looking upon to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And we look not at things that are seen, we look at things that are not seen. Mm. So when you look the right direction, there is no problem that the Holy Ghost does not have solution for. So what we should do is to direct people to Christ so they can look unto Christ, direct people to the Holy Ghost, and so whenever any kind of problem comes which they have never met before, then they have the solution. And when you think about it, think of Moses, the problems he had to confront had not been confronted by any other leader before him. I think of David, no other person had met Goliath before him that you could say this how they did it. Look at she that Meshach and Abednego, no other uh, team had gone into the fire before, so this is how they did it. So it was looking for ready made answers. Mm. This is how this one did it, how this one did it. Well, it will give us failure mentality mm. because that same problem may not come to me. We look unto Christ, we look unto the Holy Spirit. mentality. Um, I'm excited. I'm in this program. But that is what you have just said. Does that therefore mean there is no place for experience in ministry? Experience of those who have gone. <laughs> yes, there is place for experience. But you know, the experience is, is not. Uh, like um, I'm climbing up some stairs and because of that, you know, when I climb, I have strength. Mm. When I climb, I look ahead, I look forward, I see what others don't see. Mm. The experience others need is to also climb, mm. is to also see, is to also go back to the world and know that the solution to every problem is in the world and to walk by faith, not by mm. sight. And to follow the Lord, looking unto the Lord. That's the best support you can have. Mm. You know, when you read leadership books <laughs> and, you know, and all that, yeah. a lot of leadership mm. books comes from, let's say, from America. Mm. And you read, you know, I don't want to mention any author, but mm. this author, this author, this author. Mm. And the problems they face, mm. and the culture they have, mm. and their own legislation and all that, and their society is a totally different situation. And this American author is telling me that you know this how to run church and this how to go to church, this how to do this and there's uh, you know church growth conference and I tell you all that and it's not customized to where you are living here. And so the people travel, they come back and 
The problems he told them there that from those problems never show up. The problems that they face there, they don't have the solution. It will still send us back to God and send us back to Christ. Ah. All right. In leadership, leaders used to say that uh, they are pioneers and they are leading some people and they are expecting that those people following them, the potholes they fell into, they don't expect their followers to fall into the same potholes. I understand. I see. You know, yes. Moses fell into some potholes. Yes. Yes. But Joshua never saw those potholes when yes. he became a leader. Because now he had to face the uh, giants in the land. Mm -hmm. Moses did have to face that. Moses had to get water out of the rock for the people. Joshua didn't need to get water out of the rock for anybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joshua, Moses had to get manna for the people. Joshua did not have to do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, when they went to the battlefield and they were defeated, Joshua did not have anything to refer back to. He just went back to God and prayed and said, oh God, we are defeated. Why? Mm -hmm. We are seen in the camp. There wasn't that situation in the case of Moses. So the point is, uh, yes, there are pioneers, but those pioneers, the things they have faced, they are already settled. Anybody coming after them, if you thinking that uh, the same uh, problems that the pioneer faced and solved, the same problem that I'm going to face, it might be mistaken. And so what we need is to, you know, lean on God, follow God. We cannot fail as long as we are faithfully looking unto God. Thank you, sir. 1973 was the humble beginnings of what today we know as the Far Christian Bible Church. At that point, what is the mandate then the same as the mandate today? In general terms, yes. The mandate is evangelize the world edify the church. Mm -hmm. You evangelize the world, so it's the same today, evangelize the world. Edify the church, you edify the church today, the same mandate, edify the church. But your definition, understanding of the world changes as you grow in the Lord. Mm -hmm. In 1973, this was your world hmm. that you knew. The world of students, the world of young people, hmm. and the world of eager people. They even want somebody to teach them the Bible. Hmm. And you are available. That's your world, evangelize your world. Evangel identify the church. The church, the people that came, whether they are 15 or 100 or 200, that's the church you have to edify edify the church but now evangelize the world the world now has expanded mm. not really but in my own understanding my world now goes beyond Unilag my world now goes beyond Lagos City my world now goes beyond Lagos State my world now even goes beyond Nigeria so it's still the same mandate but because of my present understanding of the world evangelize the world that's what changes it mm -hmm. and some of the world now are people that don't uh, speak my language they don't read my kind of Bible, the King James Version. They don't believe in the uh, Christ I believe in. They don't believe in this world view. And this is not they, my They world. don't believe in the Christ that you believe in. Yes, because there are Muslims, there are enemies, there are people, and they're part of my world now. Mm. And at that time, 1973, I didn't see them, I didn't know them. They were there, but I didn't think of them. I looked at the campus and the people, the students, that's, that was my world. But now, the people that I need to evangelize, they have expanded. If they have expanded, I now to keep on learning, learning about them, learning from them. And I'm going to establish a restaurant. 
Um, having the local people here, I know what they eat, I know how they want the food, I cook it for them. I put my restaurant in another place now, and these people, they eat things that I don't know how to cook. Mm. I need to ask them, I need to learn from them. Mm. As my world expands, my approach to evangelism also expands, now the church. Um, you know, edify the church. This was the local church, the little church. And we had only one branch. And it was in flat two in Unilag. And I knew them, and they are young people. Most of them were not married. And I was not married myself, so I know the way they feel. I know what they are thinking about. But now, this is 2019. The church has expanded. And there are people in different professions. There are people in different areas of life. There are aged people, there are the dying, there are the living, there are the very young, there are the very old. And I need to expand my understanding of edifying the church. The same mandate, but a new approach to fulfilling that mandate. Hmm. In that way, that is, Several months ago, maybe sometimes last year, we decided that there were traditions, in quotes, that used to identify deeper life people. And we said some of those things, we are going to more or less delete them. The question I want to ask is today, can deeper life we give our members to watch television. Can uh, ladies come to church without a veil on their hair? On their hair, not on their head, on their hair. Or can men come to church with a cap on? Can intending couples go and relate one with another by passing their pastors? All of these things. You talk about changing world. These are the kind of things that the world is understand. Um, when people hear statements in isolation, they will have their own interpretation of such statements. But it's a common thing. Moses was telling the people. And Moses said, when you get to the land of Canaan, you will not do as you are doing here now. That things or change. Because you see, nomadic Christ, nomadic religion, like the children of Israel, mm -hmm. that was like nomadic mm -hmm. religion. They moved from this place to get to this place. Then the cloud, the cloudy pillar settles, mm -hmm. they settle. Mm -hmm. After some days, the cloudy pillar will remove and then they will go to another place. And obviously, the way of uh, settling was kind of it, there was a variable, it wasn't a constant thing. They, you couldn't build a house and mm -hmm. settle there because, you know, things are going to move. So, this is, it had to be taught, yes. So, Moses then told them that you are not going to continue like this. But, that did not affect the Ten Commandments. So, if anybody took that statement and then said, okay, Moses had said, that uh, we are not going to be like one in the wilderness when we get to the land of Canaan. They will misunderstand and misquote that statement mm -hmm. because immediately God called Joshua and said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You will meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according as. Moses commanded you. And when you come to Joshua 11, 15, it says, And Joshua did as Moses commanded him. Yes. As he commanded, so he did. So, you understand, there are things that are stable. There are things that are, this is the like a landmark. Yes. That you cannot say, because Moses said this, then... Uh, number one commandment, honor the Lord and him alone, that's not important. Um, you keep the loss in the Sabbath day for them, that's not important. Honor your father and your mother, that's not important, that's not it. Um, in a church like ours, uh, there are things we put in place to ease our administration. Hmm. 
We didn't put the repentance in place. We can't touch that. We didn't put conversion in place. We can't touch that. We didn't put sanctification holiness in place. We can't mm -hmm. touch that. We didn't put uh, Holy Ghost baptism in place. We can't touch that. But there are things apart from the word we put in place. Uh, if you are going to get married, we have marriage committee, and this is how the marriage committee will operate. That one is our own making our administration. If you uh, want to travel to another place, it's best for you to get a letter of recommendation that now you are with us in Lagos and now you're moving to this other state. So when you get over there, they will um, receive you. But that's something we put in place now. When the church was small, I would be the one to sign that letter. So when the people get there, they see my signature, they know that this person was a member. But now you know we have, we have expanded, even in Lagos State alone, we are like everywhere. Uh -huh. If somebody wants to leave Lagos now to go to another place, if he's waiting for me to sign <laughs> this, he will wait for him. <laughs> Therefore, we need to modify those things we put in place. Mm. But the commandments of God and doctrines of the Bible, which we didn't mm. put in place, that one we cannot change. Mm. Then, if you look at Jesus Christ, he was sending his disciples out. And he said, Now, my disciples, I give you part to heal, part to cast out devils. But don't go to the Gentiles. Mm. Go only to the Israelites, the lordship of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. And don't go to the Samaritans either. Just this is what you are to do. And that's what he did. When he was now leaving, he said, Now I'm going to change what I told you. It's still the same gospel and it's still the same uh, healing power and all that. But now go into all the world, go to the Samaritans, go to Jerusalem, go everywhere and preach my word. That was a change in a way, but the concept was still there. And you know when God now said, Peter should go to the house of Cornelius, he said, no, I can't go. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I've never done this. Yeah. Yeah. So he needed to understand that there was a paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. He didn't mm -hmm. understand that paradigm mm -hmm. shift. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. You see, when people don't make a difference between established doctrines of the Bible mm -hmm. and the things you put in place for our convenience, mm -hmm. and they put everything together, mm -hmm. they're going to make mistakes. But if you tell them, this is the Bible, this one is untouchable, this one is unchangeable, but this is, um, you know, a contemporary issue. This contemporary issue, you can handle it as the times demand. So that's what we're talking about. Well, Mathematician, you say constant. I'm very good. I'm not correct, sir. You understand? I am correct. All right, sir. No, talking about married, are you satisfied that the Bible Bible Church has fulfilled or is fulfilling that mandate? Okay. Um, the problem is if you if God has given a vision and you are going in the direction of fulfilling that vision. To say you are satisfied or fulfilled, um, it's difficult to use those words. Let me put it this way. Last week, or last month, here is the population of the world. But you know that every day, uh, the um, People, the statisticians, they tell us now that you have more than 300,000 that are born into the world mm. in either an hour or so. And then you have millions that are born into the world in a, in a year. So if last year, this is where you had reached, and you were satisfied, you were happy. Even Lagos State alone increases by some thousands every day coming from everywhere and so as you see the city expanding the nation increasing and the world population also increasing you won't get to a place where you say 
I'm satisfied. It means you are saying the people who are lost, who are sinners, who are still there. Either they are freshly born into the world or they are there, but you know, you are satisfied without their getting sick. So I would say you are satisfied with how God has used you, what God has permitted you to do, and you are longing to do what He still wants you to do. So it's a continuing process. Yes, yes. what is it? Ah, my producer is shaking her head very frantically. But uh, time is up. Yes. Um, when you daddy, okay. we may have to beg you to give us another one hour of time to continue because there are quite some issues we still have. Another time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the producer is uh, the one having <laughs> 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 <laughs>